Hello everyone, welcome back. Happy Monday, I hope you are all doing well and had a good weekend. Happy Tuesday for those of you who are far, far away. How is it going? Listen, let me apologize for last week. Last week I filmed a whole ghost story Monday. Um, and I, so I don't see the emails when they come in. Marcus, you know, who reads out the stories will take the emails and write them out for me. Um, in one kind of, um, what's it called, document, so I can just scroll through and read. And then he takes the audios and, and everything like that. So there was an email that I got that I didn't find um, very, what's the word? I guess, appropriate to send. Um, and it kind of just put me off the whole thing and it just didn't feel right, you know, vibes. It just didn't feel right. I was in a bad mood anyway, and this put me in an even more an even further bad mood. So I do apologize about that. I had to take like a, it really angered me and I'm not sure why, but yeah. Okay, so, well, we're back today and I got in the post this morning. Oh, I kind of want to be, this shirt is so uncomfortable. It's making my shoulders look like they're really high and I can't move. You know, break it in. Oh, oh God. I got the <laughs> Mel and Beetlejuice PR box. I uh, paid for this myself when it launched the other week and it's just arrived this morning. How the fuck do I open this? How do I open this? It's all here. I've taken out the mascara because I'm going to use it. And also the brushes and, and the mirror. <laughs> There's no point in me holding this. It doesn't fit. So I am using some bits from that collection today. Like I said, I paid for it. Do you ever... um? Do you ever do you ever buy something and then like when your partner or whoever it's like oh how much was that you're like oh I don't I can't remember because you're saving for a house and you feel guilty about it <laughs> just ask just asking for a friend okay so I haven't thought of today's theme what's today's theme oh you know what today's theme is the other week right I went um we took our dogs to like this open air field. It's all like safely fenced in. Oh, this is so itchy and uncomfortable, but I can't wait to get changed. Yeah, so it's all fenced in, so your dogs can run around and play, and there's loads of stuff on the field for them to do, like tires and tunnels and stuff like that. On the way back, I went down this country road because the, you know, the GPS was like, go this way, and we're like, okay, fine. So we went down this road, and I'm not even joking. Country road is like, fine, it's a country road. This was like, never seen before road. <laughs> it felt like we were just driving straight through a forest. Ditches like this deep. I was like, my car's gonna get stuck balancing on top. My tire burst and um, yeah, it was this whole thing. But we were driving back and there was this um, branch in the road. And I said to my fiance, I was like, can you please get out and move that because we're go I can't go this way because there's a huge dip. We have to go that way. So he got out of the car and, and threw it away. But you know, in your mind, you were like, what if a monster gets him? So here's what happened. I got out of the car and I went to go and pick up this branch, this log, this tree. And it like, it... <laughs> its arms grew and its branches grew and it, it wrapped around me and I was like, no, as it, you know, as it growed up my face, grown, grow, grew. And this tree just happened to be a bit purple. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. If you have any ghost stories yourself, weird experiences, alien encounters, <laughs> you never know. Send them right here to this email address. I always do like to give a huge shout out to Bailey Saren, who this series is very much inspired by. Um, I'll leave a link to her channel below. I'm very sure you know who she is already. Okay, so I'm gonna choose from, I love this packaging so much. Oh. So I'm going to, so I'm gonna choose from, I mean, this is all purple, but I love this green. I love this purple. I love all the colors in here. I'm so boring, I know, but I love these grays and this kind of thing. So we'll, we'll think of something to do here. All right, let's do this. <laughs> okay, I need, I need this today. Busy weekend, so this is good. All right. Okay, our first story. Oh, has anyone been watching, um, um, Selena on Netflix. It's amazing. Okay, let's go. So the first story is called The Forgotten Room. It says, hello, Robert. Hi. It says, thanks for sharing your knowledge of makeup with us. I truly appreciate your honesty. I really love Mondays now. Thank you so much. You know, I chose Monday to post because that's when all my favorite, like, um, ghost and horror YouTubers post as well. So I thought, Let's get in there. This is one of the many true stories my grandma used to tell me when I was young. A century ago, on the island of Malta, in a very quaint village called Burgu, <laughs> a young couple were celebrating their marriage at the groom's house. 
The guests were having a good time, feasting on the abundance of food and drink, while the newlywed couple decided to play hide and seek. Maria, the bride, could definitely find a good hiding place. She wasn't sure that Antonio would ever find her in this large house. She giggled to herself as she imagined Antonio's reaction when he couldn't find her. She remembered that on the second floor of the house, there was a storage room full of old furniture and other unused items. She quickly climbed the steps, ran through the corridor and opened the door with a rusty key. It was very dark inside, but on the left, she could see a large wooden trunk of oh, This was the perfect hiding place. The search for Maria took endless days and weeks. She was nowhere to be found. Antonio lost hope of finding her. Years passed and he was still grieving with the loss of his loved one. In the forgotten room, locked in a rotting wooden trunk, lay Maria Skellington, dressed in a ghost white wedding dress and a broken pearl necklace. <laughs> um, poor girl. And poor guy on your wedding day, can you imagine? That's so sad. Thank you so much for that story. I love stories like that. Like, oh, it's so tragic. I have a spot right in there for some reason. Okay, I just wanna do um, something up here. So let's go to our first audio story for today. Oh, and actually the only one, and then we have Marcus later. This is called Hide Whole, oh, Whole Face Ghost. Hi, Robert. I'm sure there's no need to tell you that I absolutely love your videos. So I will just jump into the story. I call this story, The Man With Holes In His Face and it still gives me chills today to talk about it. When I was 16, I went to stay with my sister in her home in North Carolina for a summer. Her husband was in the army and she needed some extra help around the house. She has two children and at the time the oldest child was five years old and the youngest was two, about to turn three. This story will focus on the younger of the two children. When I arrived at my sister's house, I had no idea that the house was haunted, but I found out very quickly. My sister had always been interested in the paranormal and even sought out paranormal experiences when she was younger. So it came to no surprise when I arrived to the house and she had told me that the house was haunted. When I asked her to be more descriptive, she said that her daughter, the two-year-old, will call her Katie, had imaginary friends that she believed to be spirits. She would find Katie talking to something invisible as if she were having a normal conversation. And when these instances occurred, she was always staring up into the distance as if she could see who she was talking to. When my sister asked Katie who she was talking to, she would usually say, there's a man in my room or something like that. However, Occasionally, Katie would become extremely frightened, and each time she was questioned in this state, she would say that she was talking to the man with holes in his face. Katie described this man as being a t as tall as the ceiling, with long black hair that reached the floor, and of course, he had holes in his face. Every night, Katie would wake up and run into her parents' room crying. When questioned, she would say that the man with holes in his face would not leave her alone, and that is all she would say. Uh, after all, she's only two going on three, so it's not surprising that she didn't have anything else to say. But, one night, Katie asked me if she could sleep with me because she was too scared to sleep in her own room. Of course, I said yes. I love my niece, and I hated that she was so scared of her room, so I allowed her to sleep with me. At the time, I was sleeping on the couch, so I made a little bed for her on the floor beside the couch, and we both went to sleep. Sometime in the middle of the night, I awoke with sleep paralysis. I could not move a single muscle except for my eyelids, which I was able to open. I tried screaming out to my sister, but failed. After about a minute, I was finally able to move again. I laid on the couch contemplating what had just happened to me. 
I thought about going into my sister's room and telling her, but I was still really shooken up about it. About a minute later, Katie began to cry. I turned to look to her and asked her, Katie, what's wrong? Why are you crying? I remember to this day the look of pure terror on that child's face as she pointed to the ceiling. And I asked again, what's wrong? She did not break her gaze, but rather continued pointing at the ceiling. I looked and there was nothing there. It was just a dark room and I looked around and did not see anything. And it seemed like she was pointing at the fan. And so I asked her, is it cold? Do you want me to turn off the fan? I knew she wasn't cold, but I was basically grasping at any hope that this was not a paranormal experience. She continued to stare and point at the ceiling and simply shook her head no. I grabbed her and pulled her onto the couch with me and asked her one more time, Katie, what happened? She finally broke her gaze and looked at me and I can still remember the look of terror in her face as she said, the man with holes in his face was standing on me and he would not let me move. To me, that is just insane. I've heard of sleep paralysis and I don't always think it's a paranormal experience, but the fact that it happened to me and then about a minute later happened to my niece and she saw the man with holes in his face that he, she had been talking to previously just makes me think that this was not regular sleep paralysis. This was something paranormal. The next morning, I told my sister what had happened, and she told me that not that long ago, she had a friend from the army staying with her and her husband. One morning, she woke up to him packing all of his bags. She asked him what he was doing, and he replied with, I don't know what kind of freaky shit you have going on here, but I don't want to be any part of it. After questioning him, he finally told her that he had woken up in the middle of the night and could not move. When he opened his eyes, he saw a tall figure with long black hair and holes in his face standing on top of him. After hearing that, I knew without a doubt that what had happened to me was indeed something paranormal. About a year later, my sister moved out of that house, and ever since then, Katie slept through the night and never mentioned the man with holes in his face again as if it had never happened. I have no idea how my sister managed to stay in that house for as long as she did, but I am glad she's gone now. And looking back and talking to my sister about those stories that she had told me and my experience, and the fact that the neighbor's house was haunted too, we think it was probably an Indian burial ground or some sort of burial ground in the area on that street. Well, thanks for listening to my story. I hope it gave you some chills and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. Oh, terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Humanoid things. Tall with long hair touching. Are you kidding me? Oh, that was incredible. Thank you so much and very well told. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh my goodness me. I can't even imagine... First of all, sleep paralysis um, frightens me because I know so many people suffer from sleep paralysis and it can be scary not being able to move, but then to have that added dimension of something unexplained and, and terrifying, but to see this man standing. So our next story is called The Halloween McDonald's Hands. It says, Aloha, Robert. I love your ghost story and makeup videos and wanted to share what happened to me. Please do. I'm from Hawaii, and my story happened back in the 80s when I was in the ninth grade during the week of Halloween. One day, early evening, my friends wanted to go to the nearby McDonald's where they were hosting a haunted house in a restaurant's basement. You enter the restaurant, walk through the employer's back door, go down a set of steps to the basement. There was about four of us friends who entered the basement among some others ready to go through the haunted house. As we walked in, 
I immediately felt lots of hands all over my head, shoulders, arms and back. It felt as if there were six pairs of hands touching me. I kept crouching lower and lower as I was walking to try and get away from the hands on me but it never eased up. Towards the end of a walk I was on my hands and knees trying to get out of it. I was thinking to myself that the hands must belong to tool workers who were hanging from the ceiling or lots of workers along the walls to be able to keep touching us like that. As we exited the haunted house, and the basement, my friends helped me upright and we went up the other set of stairs to the ground level. My friends said they wanted to go in again. I told them I didn't want to because the hands were too creepy for me. All my friends looked at me and asked, what hands? I explained about a lot of hands on me and none of my friends experienced any of it. They thought I was joking. Since then, I've never gone to a haunted house again. Yeah, fuck that, I wouldn't either. Thank you so much for that story. I love haunted houses and like horror nights, you know, like you know, at Universal and all this kind of stuff. But you kind of know that no one's going to touch you because it's not really allowed. So although you feel like in immediate danger, you're not really in any danger, you know. But that would be irritating. Imagine just people just constantly touching you and you're going through this house and... <laughs> That would annoy me so much. All right, so I'm gonna do my skin, get the boring bit over and done with. And as is custom, we have Marcus reading us two stories. Go. Calling my twin. Hello, Robert. I just wanted to start off by saying I love all the videos that you do. My twin and I share a room. This night, I was particularly tired from being at college all day, so I'd fallen asleep quite early. I'd woken up because I heard my mum calling my twin's name. Raven. 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 Or so I thought. I assumed it was my mum coming back in to get a charger like previous nights. I just stayed in bed with my eyes closed. Then I heard it again. Raven. 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 I turned on my phone's flash and said, she's asleep. And as I turned to look towards my door, I realised it was closed and nobody was there. I look. I see my twin asleep. I'm not going to lie. I started to freak out. But I just turn my flash off and lay back down. The second I turn my flash off and put my head on the pillow, I hear it again. Raven, right in my ear. I jumped up, turned my flash on again and looked around the room. Nothing. Then someone pushed my bed hard. I jumped out of bed, went to the living room, where I stayed up all night watching Netflix. I was just so freaked out. It said ghosts like twins because they can easily contact them. Twins are said to not fully cross the veil into the physical world, so twins are something between the physical and spiritual planes. Thanks for reading my story. So as we know, James has a twin called Robert who does skincare on his own channel, so I wonder what you think of that, Jane. Oh, no, wait. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, this next story is called Henry the Wall Ghost. Hi Robert, really love your videos and mainly watch them because I feel so much loving energy and it makes me feel all at peace in a weird way. I have two kids aged 11 and 6, I'm a single mum and when I moved into my apartment, my son aged 5 at the time would often go into his room and talk to himself. Well, I thought he was talking to himself. I noticed that when he got into trouble he'd go into his room, sit on his bed, look at the window, talk about how he felt. I asked him one day, who are you talking to? And he says, the window man, my friend which really creeped me out. Hoping it's an imaginary friend, I just left it. Plus he said friend, so I'm thinking if anything it's a friendly ghost. One day I was talking to my kids about how maybe one day I'd see my brother again, who had passed away as a baby, how amazing it would be to hug him. My son says, so one day I can see my friend too. I asked, who's your friend? And he says, the window man. So I asked him, why would you see him there? And he says, well, he died, and his brother too. My heart was racing at this point. I asked him if he can tell me more about the window man. He says he looks after me when I feel lonely or sad. But you can't see him because he goes into his space when you come into my room. He wears an army suit and used to play baseball. A few days pass and my son says, You want to see something Henry gave me? Now he has a name. So I said, of course. He leads me to his room, looked on top of the dresser, and then started looking around as if he couldn't find it. He says it's not here, he must have put it back in his space. I asked where the secret space was and he pointed towards the wall. 
One night I couldn't fall asleep, suddenly I heard this very loud static noise in my ear, while being held down slightly, but being pulled to the left. I couldn't get loose, so I started praying and praying, until finally it was gone. The next day my son tells me Henry doesn't like me. I just can't up and move, I'm a single mum here trying to make things work. So I go to his room and sit on his bed while the kids were at school. I started very nicely talking to Henry. I was absolutely terrified, but I was saying how I appreciate him watching over my son, and that it's time to move on and it's just scaring us, trying to be as respectful as possible. It's been over a year now, and no mention of Henry at all. When I ask my son, he says, Henry said goodbye. But when we drive past the graveyard, my son will always point out, that's where Henry and his brother live. <laughs> uh, scary. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the stories. Honestly, kids do the darndest things, don't they? Thank you for those stories. Tell me below if you had a child, or say you have a child, or you know you look after a child, and they started saying things like they're seeing a man in the walls and things like that. Would you? I mean, I know, I straight away would be like Googling how to get rid of ghosts. <laughs> but would you just assume maybe it's like an imaginary friend? But it's something really strange as well when like a ghost like is talking to your child, but it hates you. <laughs> it's like, that's my child, you're in my house. Okay, so our last story for today is called, You Can Come In Now. It says, love your ghost story and makeup Mondays. Thank you so much. My aunt would get my cousin Jenny to look after her siblings when she leave to do certain things. Her two brothers at the time were aged nine and one. She at the time was 15. They used to live in this big brown house that was right near the bush and field. Her youngest brother was in the bedroom asleep while her and her boyfriend Sam watched TV in the living room. Her mum recently bought a baby monitor. And while they were sitting there, they started hearing voices. They turned the TV down and realised her voices were coming from the baby monitor. They stood there and listened. It was two male voices saying, look at the baby. Should we take it? They won't know. They knew nobody else was in the house. Jenny got up and went down the hallway towards the bedroom. The light was on, the door was shut, and they held the baby monitor. I could still hear the men talking. Let's just take him, they won't know, they won't care. I can hear them coming down the hallway. They can't come. And the men started to laugh. Jenny tried turning the doorknob, but it was locked. One of the men started laughing and said, you can't come in yet, in a deep, crackly, suspenseful voice. She heard her brother start crying, so she started banging on the door. She could see their shadow going back and forth under the door. She banged louder and started to use herself to break down the door. Then the man said, you can come in now. The light turned off. The door opened. They ran in, grabbed Rick from the crib, looked everywhere to find the men. They couldn't find anything. The door to the patio was locked. Windows were locked, nothing was moved. She took the kids in the living room till her mother returned 20 minutes later. Her mother never left her home after that. Ooh, that's creepy as fuck. <laughs> Baby monitors are a scary situation I feel because you can get those incidences where like people like hack them can't you but if like the lights are going on and off in the room and you see shadows in the room is this like a hacking baby monitor incident I don't think so so I'm going back on some lashes and a lip and we'll be done all right everyone so this is our finished um sucked in by a tree oh I'm having a bit of trouble with this lash here I really don't actually don't like these lashes they're a bit small for my liking anyway thank you so much for your incredible stories this week it is very much appreciated if you want to send your own story you can go ahead and send it right here ghosts encounters scary kids sucked in by trees send them right here and if you want to send in an audio message like you heard today then go ahead pre-write it down if you want to and you can read it out to me you can even video yourself um doing these stories and i'll be more than happy to add those into my videos as well thank you so much for joining me check out the rest of this um ghost story playlist if this is your first time here i will see you very soon i'm changing the background soon as well um, it's still going to be dark, it's still going to be um, my real life, absolutely 100% real candles that are running out of battery <laughs> are still going to be here. <laughs> Thanks again everyone, I will see you very, very soon. Bye.